Okay, I'm making a video of part two of this lesson. We're gonna finish this page we already started. If you haven't done this part, please watch the video part one. Um, it's linked in the assignment and it's on my YouTube channel. Okay, so we're gonna finish this. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is another box of knitting about the same size, about one inch by one inch. Here I am showing you in comparison to my finger. And this time I'm going to knit in yellow. And we're gonna combine both the knitting and the transparent glazing. So after we finish this page, we will be um, taking a picture of the page and turning it in for a grade. So um, in when we are knitting, we want to make sure that we're just not getting stripes or lines. We just want the lines to go in all different directions. And I'm putting a real nice coating of yellow all over this box and then I'm gonna go ahead and grab a uh, blue and I'm gonna put a so what we're doing now is that transparent glazing and you'll notice some of the spots are picking up more blue than others because the paper was blank in those places it wasn't filled in with yellow so now I'm putting a nice coat of blue so remember in transparent glazing, oops, I just made a, a little bit of a strong mark. Okay, I'll zoom in on that. In the transparent glazing, we wanna be able to see two colors at the same time, like it's two sheets of glass. And some of you will say, but then why don't you just use a green pencil? But actually, making green from two colors can make a much more beautiful artwork and it's better when we're doing something like making shadows on a say we have a yellow flower and we want to put some shadows on it it's going to look better if we put darker shadows on the yellow than just grabbing the green pencil so i'm going back to my yellow and i'm going to Put another coat of yellow on here to just kind of mix it and I, I can see I kind of have some striping going on so I'm gonna hit it one more time with the blue and then in that blue you can do any colors but try to use two primary colors to make a secondary color box so make like green, orange, or violet when you do this. So you'll see that um, color pencil, uh, you guys have probably been using color pencils and you just get in there and you color. But the idea is when we're making art, we wanna make it maybe a little bit more refined and we wanna be able to layer those colors. So now I'm gonna call this transparent blue plus yellow transparent blue plus yellow equals green visually we see green but it's actually two colors sitting together in the same place okay so now I'm going to zoom out. Right here, I'm going to do one more gradient. I'm going to make this one a little bit longer. And this time, I'm going to do a three color gradient. So I'm thinking like maybe like a sunset. 
So I'm going to go from orange to pink to blue. So here I have from blue to pink. So the pink is actually going to be in the middle. So I'm going to start with pure pink in the middle. Pink is just a light red. It's red mixed with white. And then I'm going to phase it out, going in both directions. So I'm going to overlap the pink and orange. And I'm going to fade it out, going this way. Once you learn some better coloring techniques, it's going to put you in the mood to color. And now that you're taking drawing, you don't need coloring books anymore. You can just go for it. Okay, so there's my pink. It's pure in the middle. And it's, it's zoning out in both directions. So now, oh, I'm going to start with orange at this end. Okay, so here I'm going to start with orange. So we're just doing the end of this lesson. It's not going to, it's only going to take a few minutes, I think. So now I have orange blending to pink. And you might have to go, oh, that looks good. You may have to go back and forth with the pink on top of the orange again, get them to mix, try not to leave stripes. Okay. I do this in a lot of my paintings. I do like a, a gradient of many colors, sometimes like five colors to make the, to make it look like the sky. Sometimes I paint the LA, I paint smog at the bottom because we always have brown gunk at the bottom. So here I'm going up into my night sky. This is like a sunset with the evening coming. And we love this. This is one of the things we love about being on the planet Earth. Okay, and I'm gonna get it real dark up at the top. And I'm gonna go ahead and work on a little more pink on top of this. Okay, so remember this is a three color gradient. I did this one first. I did this one second. And I did this one third. And we just want to try to have each one fade into the other where you can't really see a line between the two. You don't want just like a patch of each color. So do three color gradient. Okay, so transparent knitting, three color gradient. And what are we gonna do last? For our last thing, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just draw like a flower. This is just like a flower from my imagination, but I'm imagining a sunflower and I have drawn and painted a lot of sunflowers in my life. It's very inspired by like Van Gogh and I used to sell flowers so I love flowers in um, in artwork. So I just went ahead and I drew this is what we call a daisy form and that is a circle with things radiating out from it like a sun. And um, I'm gonna. I'm starting with this gold, and I'm going to the sunflower. It has some creases. If you've ever looked at it very closely, there's like some wrinkles in the center. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do these marks that show the fact that there's creases in the petals. Yeah, this is not my favorite 
color pencil, the um, Prisma colors are better if you can afford them. And then um, in the center, it's kind of like a weird grid. Um, There's, this is where all the little sunflower seeds grow, and they kind of grow in a diamond pattern. So I kind of did a cross contour diamond pattern. Okay, so now I'm just gonna put, let me get that in focus. Okay. See if you can see it, yeah, that's better. Now I'm going to go ahead and just put a light coat of yellow. This is when when something is yellow or red or green or whatever, it, we call that the local color. So the local color, the color of the object, the local color is yellow. So I'm just going to give everything yellow now. I put some details in. We don't ever want to mix a regular graphite pencil with color pencil it just gets spread around makes everything black it doesn't work trust me it doesn't work so I'm just giving everything a good coating of yellow including the center Okay, so now I want to try to bring out the light and dark on the petals. I might brighten up some of these. By the way, if you can al always uh, do this demo looking at a photo of a flower. I kind of know what flowers look like, so I'm just... So in the sunflower, the center is always green, so I'm going to do a transparent glazing of green. Of course I could do that with blue too, right? And then around the edges, these kind of tuck in. So green is next to yellow on the color wheel. So green is a, the neighbor of, of yellow, so it looks real natural. If I'm doing some shadows, can you see that? It's kind of shiny. I'm, I'm starting to build up some shadows that are telling the person looking at the flower that this is tucked in. So like I said, I'm just making this up from my um, imagination. Another thing that we see in um, orange is another neighbor of uh, yellow. So I might do some orange here in the middle to kind of build up. So I'm using gold, I'm using orange, I'm using yellow. So I'm trying to build some shadows. because orange is also related to yellow because yellow is in the orange and yellow is in the green. So uh, it's natural to use those colors to try to build up some shadow space and then maybe even put some orange on the center here.
and you can see where I haven't put the orange yet, it doesn't look quite as alive. And we do this with human skin. We actually mix in orange and green and blue and violet, and it makes us look more alive. So we want to be able to layer some colors. And then if I wanted to like turn the corner with this, I could make these look kind of like they're going downhill. So they kind of have shadows that make them bend away from the person looking at the... Okay, so then I can do things that are kind of unexpected, like get out a red or a violet and build up. So in order to get shadows, we don't normally want to use black if we can use color. So we leave the black for naturally black things like black hair or black dog or black shirt or whatever. But when we're working with color, it's better if we can use like opposite colors to um, build up the shadows. So now you can start to see how that transparent glazing that we were learning about here and learning about when we were mixing the color wheel, that becomes um, super useful when we're trying to make something look 3D. And I'm going to even put like a darker circle in the middle of the flower because they kind of have a gradient in the middle of the sunflower if you look at it. And then I might even use a glazing of darker green over that red. And then I can go ahead and put a stem in. So for the stem, I might use something like blue to help make the shade on the stem. Of course, I can keep going and I can build this up. I can use blue, so I would have red, blue, yellow. I can have all those colors making the, the, I can also use like the blue on the orange, they're opposite. Okay. Oh. And, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and um, I'm going to make that flower pop out by putting some darker color around it. I chose blue because, well, it was in my hand, but also we're used to seeing the sun in the sky or the sunflower against the sky. So here, um, I'm sorry, you, I'm showing you so this is the end of the homework, but you can fool around with these ideas and create a scene starting next week we're going to do some just like we did with the ink the portrait landscape still life we're going to do the same thing with the color pencils so we're, each week we're going to do a drawing And we're going to look at what David Hockney does with color pencil because he got famous for his color pencil drawings when he was young. They're really beautiful. So I'll show you some early David Hockney from the 70s when he was younger and just starting his art career. Okay. Okay, so that's it. A nice little portrait of a flower. And if you do an extra drawing, go ahead and throw that, um, take a picture of it and put it in with the assignment. Okay, 
So that is the end of your whole color pencil page. It should look something like this when you get done. Take a picture of it and post, oh sorry, it's out of focus, but take a picture of it and uh, send it in to me. Um, I'm trying to focus it. Take a picture of it, it's focusing on my hand, there you go. Take a picture of it and post that you did all parts of this lesson and then um, we will move on to uh, doing drawings uh, using the color pencil.